Good morning. Welcome to worship. I'm glad I get to experience this firsthand instead of online. But um, people that are still online, we are working out the kinks. And I expect there's going to be a few that we've already identified this morning. We're going to try a couple of ideas. Um, so this week is another trial time. Next week, we hope to have figured out how to have a few more people present and able to worship, including the possibility of cars behind us and cars in the parking lot. So we aren't sure if our next experiment is going to work, but we're going to be trying more and more to uh, offer ways for people to come to worship. What you'll notice when you do come to worship, and you probably noticed last week as the service looks different, than it did. We aren't supposed to say a lot together. We are not supposed to sing a lot together. So we've moved our one hymn to the end of worship. Uh, that's our compromise to allow at least something to sing. And uh, there will be a few places where people speak. They're asked to not use full voice. You might um, kind of move your mouth or, or whisper or something with that. And with singing, if we were to add more, the idea is there's really no safe way. But if um, people do that is to hum instead of sing, because when we sing, more breath goes out and then it collects and it can cause problems. But um, we are almost ready to get past the dress rehearsal time. Announcements that I know of are that tonight, the worship service at 5 We'll have a hymn I was hoping to have at this service as well. So if you want to hear a hymn related to the sermon, it, you have to go through the second service, which is also the way 
to participate in Holy Communion. So we have Holy Communion in that as well. And the music, the message will be a little bit different at that one. Lots more music because it's only the, the few of us that are gathered. The three of us, I guess, we're here today, this week. Council is going to be meeting on Tuesday at 6.30 by Zoom. Um, so that, that we're back in that stream of things. Some of the committees will start to meet more regularly again as we're getting closer to the fall and we'll be doing more planning for um, how to continue to be church in very strange times. The book study is going to be today at three. I believe everyone that's in the group has the link and that's fine. Um, next week, I'm asking the book study group to consider not meeting or just meet without me um, because I kind of like to have off the afternoon um, so that maybe, maybe, fingers crossed, can see grandchildren um, from afar. That'll be hard. Um, next week is my installation, and that is somebody asked me today what that means, and it's something like um, an inaugural uh, inauguration or uh, when you get married, you make promises to each other. And it's not making promises that commit us for the rest of our lives, but it is making promises between congregation and me that God has called us together and that we will serve God together going forward for however long God has in mind. And so um, Pastor Melanie Walshflager will be coming from the Senate office to do my installation and it will happen out here. And I haven't checked the weather. I hope it'll be fine. I know there's one announcement in addition. Are there any other announcements? Yep. Oh, thank you. All right, so in the um, worship folder, it has LFT and RT. That means people on left and right sides are speaking. So um, I guess we'll go with your left and right. So right people, I'll try to speak with you. We'll be the smaller group and left people, you're on this side, all right? That way we are not all speaking lots together. Again, it's a way to keep from um, having lots of droplets and aerosols collect. You can start walking and then I'll um, talk about this. Last week was our first, and I think we probably hope only, but it worked well, Vacation Bible School. And one of the experiments we're going to try is seeing if we can um, provide the people here with some evidence of it and some fun, as well as people online. We're going to see what works. And we have a... Nisi's going to give us a special announcement. I'm really happy. Um, I'm doing a project for... Can you get really close? Yeah. I'm doing a project for the AYTI program, and I need people to be in a video. So if you're willing to do that, it won't take that long after um, service. Can you come find me, and I'll record it really fast. What's the video about? Um, it's kind of like a blind reaction, so I don't want to say too much. Oh, OK. But yep. um, yeah. <laughs> OK. Sorry. All right, so if you want to participate in Nisi's project that she's doing for the summer program that she was in, that would be a wonderful way to um, support that her efforts. And is it related to what you already talked to? Oh, and it's, it's exciting, I think. So that's why I wanted her to name it, but all right. Um, any other announcements? Okay. We won't get up and down like usual because again, that gets people breathing. If you really want to stand, that's fine. Um, we're trying to figure this out as we go. We're going to do the um, time for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, 
we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Siblings in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Now, in place of our typical time to have music, we are going to try to watch or to hear the Vacation Bible School, but there's no sound quite yet. It's not broken yet.
<laughs> sound floor videos out here. Um, and so the reason we're going to go ahead and do them in the children's message is because those at home will be watching it and we'll see what we can see and hear what we can hear. But um, more of the kids are watching from home today anyway. So, all right. Sorry, I have to get my mic back on. Could you tell that it came over the mic? You're going to help me know that. All right. So we will do that again for the next one. Let us now pray. O oh God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we have our readings. The first reading is from Genesis, chapter 37. Jacob settled in the land where his father had lived as an alien, the land of Canaan. This is the story of the family of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old, was shepherding the flock with his brothers. He was a helper to the sons of Bilbah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was the son of his old age and he had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now his brothers went to the pasture, their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. He answered, here I am. So he said to him, go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock and bring word back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron he came to Shechem, and a man found him wandering in the fields. The man asked him, what are you seeking? I'm seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, they have gone away, for I heard them say, let us go to Dolphin. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dolphin. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to him, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered him out of their hands saying, let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the long robe with sleeves that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin, on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, what profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. The word of the Lord. Because um, Kirsten needed to go on vacation and this was taking a very long time to pull all together. So there's a couple of places that say there's music that sadly we cannot have. And with that song, we'll continue to the second reading. Romans chapter 10. Moses writes, concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, 
that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith proclaimed. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous who all to all who call on the Lord. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel today is from Matthew, the 14th chapter. No, nope. we're on the wrong page. It flipped. But it's still the 14th chapter. And if you feel like standing, you may stand, but that's up to you. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, it's a, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. And now we will try the children's sermon, and hopefully the speaker will work now. Good morning. I invite all the kids and all the children of God to hear the children's message. So today we just heard the story of Jesus walking on the water out to the disciples who are in the boat, and it's really stormy outside. Jesus invites Peter to get out of the boat and to walk on the water with him. And we sang a song at VBS this week exactly about this. So um, I invite any kids who are present uh, in person worship uh, to come up to the front and uh, lead everyone in the motions. The song will be playing. Um, and if you're at home, um, please stand up and dance along.
every week we learn a little more. If you didn't pick up from both uh, the videos, the kids w were really involved and we even had a confirmation a mentor with us, so who is here today too. And then different confirmands participated in music too. All right, trying to get this back on. <sighs> Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for this learning experiment and for the possibility to begin to gather in person as well as virtually. We ask that your Holy Spirit, who has drawn each of us here and into the, the stratosphere, the, um, the virtual participation, will be in our thoughts and minds and hearts as we participate in worship and hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I think I'm supposed to stay behind here with this. All right, so um, the passage today is actually the same day as what you heard last week. Seems a week apart, but nope. Um, later in the day when Jesus had fed the 5,000 through the disciples, this was that evening or toward the end of the day, and Jesus sent off the disciples. Thinking back to last week, remember the context is that John the baptizer had had his head cut off. He had been killed. And so Jesus was wanting to grieve and spend time renewing himself. And so he had intended to go off by himself with his disciples. And when he came ashore, he saw the crowd. And his heart, actually the very core of him, the depths of his being were stirred with compassion. And so it was that Jesus took care of the needs, including feeding people at that time. But the grieving, the weariness, those things weren't gone. And so it was that Jesus made, like forced, compelled his disciples to leave him alone. And he sent off the people, and this time the crowds actually did leave him alone. And he was able to go and be on the mountain, which in Matthew is one of the symbols of being in a conversation with God, close to God. And he renewed his own soul. The disciples, think about them. They also, some of them may have been followers of um, John the baptizer. They had their own grief. They had their own weariness. And they had not had the time to rest as well. And then when they wanted to send everyone off to get food, um, Jesus said, no, you do it. So they had to be the hands and feet that fed 5,000 men plus all those women and children. I can imagine they were pretty worn out. So there they are on the water in their boat trying to get to the other side. Now, water and, and seas in the um, Bible represent chaos and places of confusion or evil or danger. And so the disciples, many of whom were fisher folk, so they weren't as scared this time as they had been on the stormy trip, they were out in that water at night. And even if there wasn't a storm, there was major wind fighting against them. So they couldn't get to the other side, which apparently wasn't all that far away. So they struggled as it was, uh, were all evening. And so I'm thinking by the time they see this figure walking by them on the sea, that they might have been wondering about their own um, perceptions. And maybe they really thought it was a ghost. And if, it, if that was a ghost, if that was a Jesus ghost, that means something had happened to Jesus back on the mountain. And so the terror, the, the anxiety, the instant reaction that I think we all would have would not be, oh, look at Jesus walking on the water, even though Jesus had um, just 
done a huge miracle in front of them anyway. This was a little bit different. So Peter or Jesus tells the disciples um, to take heart. The actual Greek is ego, I mean, I am, like I am God, and don't be afraid. Peter being Peter and saying all the things he's prone to say, he says, well, if you are Jesus, you're not just some phantom out there, then you need to have me come out and walk on the water with you. And he did because Jesus, I kind of imagined Jesus going, all right, you know. Any other time in this scripture that people said, if you are the son of God, if you are Jesus, then you do this or that, or Satan in the wilderness. And when he was being killed on the cross, you know, if you are the son of God, bring healing or, or come down. Actually, I should have looked it up in Matthew, which one it is. Um, but this was a comment that people that were anti-Jesus and didn't believe him would say. But Peter gets out of the boat, walks on water for a few minutes, seconds probably, and then starts to sink. Um, and then Jesus says, oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? Now, in this scripture, Jesus says, you of little faith, almost like a term of endurement, oftentimes, or maybe a little exasperation with those disciples, I don't know. But it wasn't that he was shaming Peter, most likely at that point. A lot of times this passage is taught as if by doubting, then Peter sank. But I wonder if actually the doubt that Jesus is calling him a little bit to account of in this is that he needed proof. With everything else he had experienced with Jesus, he says, if, then. He needed some other proof than Jesus' words. And that's what led to his sinking into the water. As um, soon as Jesus is on the boat, everything calms down. And then that makes me wonder, how did they get to the shore? Because you need a little bit of wind. Um, maybe they were rowing. I don't know. So this passage is interesting in that any time in Scripture where Jesus is going across the water from one side to the other, that indicates that there is some kind of transformation happening. Sometimes it's in Jesus thinking, even coming up shortly, uh, the Canaanite woman. Um, some, a lot of times it's trying to transfer the disciples' thinking and the crowds from what they had always known to be true to the truth that was being revealed in Jesus. And again, remembering that the sea represents chaos and and angst and uncertainty and the like. The church has often been aligned with, equated with boats, ships, in the chaos of life. It is a place where people come to worship together as far as the building, um, within the building to worship together and to be reminded that in spite of the noise and the chaos and the fear that God has truth and reality in a calmer hand and all will be okay. God is with us and we are not alone. We are guided always. Some um, of the churches I would visit for worship in Wisconsin had little boats, little ships hanging from the rafters. And that was, again, part of the reminder. I think it's the Danish church, as I looked it up, because I never knew if I was in Danish, Norwegian, Finnish, Swedish, whatever, German. Um, so that sense of understanding, the, the worship space that we call a sanctuary a lot of times is actually called the nave. Like, the, it's an, um, indicating a boatness, like the Navy. And so, um, I suppose if we think about this as our upside down boat being the, the tent that is here. And I wonder if in this extremely chaotic, fearful, unknowing time, the chaos of this time, 
if one of the problems that many of us are experiencing with disorientation and a sense of emptiness, perhaps, is that our place to go to be reminded that we are okay and to remind ourselves that we're not alone is a place we've been isolated from. We've only been able to interact very much with virtual uh, interactions. And I think that is why it makes matters even more to people now that some of the trappings that we're familiar with are in place. So it feels familiar. That's one reason we changed the, the way we're set up today, because in our worship space, this is more how we are scattered than from one end to a long other, to try to make it feel more normal. But the reality is, I think everyone here would say it doesn't feel normal. Seeing one another from afar, seeing one another under the mask, not being able to sing when we're used to, not being able to stand and, and speak when we're used to, it doesn't feel right. I know last week some people spoke of it feeling kind of sterile. So we do want to try to include some bits of music and um, other people from outside that can liven it up. I added a few pictures, not too many. I guess last week I did too, um, because it is empty of some of the trappings that we are accustomed to. But Jesus um, was with the disciples and calmed them down in the midst of their anxiety and helped them get to the other side. And the, the kind of joke or comment that if you're going to walk on water, you've got to step out of the boat. Well, maybe we don't need to think we have to step on water. We aren't called to do those sorts of miracles. But if we were to just stay in the boat, that's not so good either. And those uh, disciples would have gotten pretty hungry and dirty and cranky if they'd have stayed on the boat. At some point, you have to get out of the boat and walk into the world to be a part of the world and take the, the light of Jesus out in the world. That is hard to do right now to understand what it is we are called to do. But other churches are doing a variety of things. Uh, I saw a food pantry when I was walking here yesterday being offered by an emergency food uh, pantry by I think a covenant church over this way. Um, I wanna ask all of us, all of you and me to think about how God might be calling us to impact the world around us, our community, even now, what sorts of responses are we able to give and supports for those that are, have been struggling without their paycheck since it stopped? I mean, without that extra money, and we don't know exactly, even though it's being promised that it will start again, when will it start? And the people who are already in too high a rent, how are they going to continue? We don't have the resources to pay everyone's rent. I'm not saying that. But maybe there's some way that we as a community of faith can think about how to support perhaps people in our own congregation or in the wider community in this time of continuing uncertainty beyond the disease about economic stability and survival. So in Romans, we could say lots of things, but the, I'll just stick with the ending part because it kind of goes with getting out of the boat. We cannot anticipate that people just out and around are gonna catch Jesus. They might, but Jesus has entrusted the church, the nave, the people of God to be the carriers of the message of love and forgiveness and reassurance and accompaniment. And Jesus has commissioned us through our baptism. Paul reminds us, but it goes all the way back into Isaiah. God has always intended God's people to be those that take the word of, from God and call people into relationship with God. And that throughout the centuries, that is our charge and it has not stopped. 
even though we are more isolated from one another and not in as close a relationship. So how will people know about God's love? Because people are sent. We are sent, you are sent. You know the language of those God brings alongside you virtually or physically. You know the words that need to be spoken and reminded, uh, people reminded that they are beloved. You know whose heart is breaking, who is disp in despair in these times, who is terrified about what might happen in their lives. We all have a role to play. We all are sent. Let us all tell people that regardless of the chaos of life and the storm, wind, and the uncertainty, we do have stability as the people of God. And we come together and hold one another up. And as we are held up, we hopefully can hold other people reaching out, helping people out of the depths of despair. Amen. And this is where we were going to have the music that we sang um, that you need to watch at five o'clock to hear. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we see and hear Jesus calling. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. May we follow wherever Christ leads. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations and their leaders, in you steadfast love and faithfulness meet, and righteousness and peace prevail. May nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, accompany all who are lonely. Hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering this day, especially August, Patty, Sheridan, Jerry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our congregation, including those we name now, we pray for those who are new to this community, for students and teachers preparing for a new school year, and for those who are struggling with unexpected hardship. Supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For what else do the people of God pray? Holy God, we pray for those who have surgery this week and for those who are continuing to recover from surgery. We pray for those in the path of tornadoes, hurricanes, fires, and those impacted by the explosion in Beirut. Help us to recognize ways that even though we are far away, we can from this place provide support. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Christ. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Make sure I have it on right. The peace of Christ be... 
be with you. And also with you. Uh, we just need to wave at one another. Um, you know, peace signs wave. We do not exchange bumps even. Thank you. So we are going to have an offering of music and um, a reminder in this time of offering that it is to represent the ways that God has blessed our lives and, and given us all that we are and all we are interested in. So uh, yes, sometimes that is in money and thank you for those that are generous in sending in checks or online, but it's also in participating in trials in in sharing gifts that God has sent us. Van. Thank you, Zan. God of wonder, God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. We join together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May there be peace that passes understanding within you today. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May you use the spiritual gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content in knowing you are a precious child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow each and every soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. May there be peace of God within you today. Amen.
so in a moment, you will be excused um, kind of like at a wedding or in the old days with um, when we all were ushered in and out. Please pay attention to the ushers. They are helping us to stay uh, physically separated. So uh, they will tell you the directions, but I think it's kind of going to be split. And anyone that is going to participate in uh, Nisi's video, please meet her where? Right there? Right there. Okay. Right where she is. Very good. Now go with Christ. Be an advocate for those in need of one. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.